there, there's another issue about prolonging remission. And uh, for, with respect to follicular lymphoma, we know that uh, it's FDA approved that in patients who get upfront therapy, that uh, it's pretty standard that a lot of patients will receive two years of rituximab maintenance therapy. I'm not a proponent that everybody gets rituximab maintenance therapy, and I believe personally that the data would indicate that the number of patients, if they just get retreated when they actually have disease recurrence, may potentially do just as well with using, utilizing less antibody. And the question is, we have so many other new agents that instead perhaps consolidation with an agent that is not being utilized in the induction, we'll say, in the, in the therapy you're giving, may be much more effective with less cross resistance. But it's interesting at ASH this year, there are actually two abstracts. One is actually looking at rituximab and another on ofatumab with respect to utilizing it in CLL for maintenance. Before this, before this actually, um, it was pretty clear that uh, maintenance therapy had no role with respect to rituximab in patients after they got, say, immunochemotherapy in CLL. But now we're getting some data now emerging. I was wondering if maybe Tom and Shuel can comment on that. You can't get me started on this topic. Okay. <laughs> All right. um, these two abstracts are interesting. They do uh, show a study after chemotherapy or chemoimmunotherapy. Patients are randomized to receive maintenance therapy with rituximab or ofatumumab uh, versus just observation. And I think it's fair to say that uh, patients treated with rituximab or ofatumumab may potentially have a longer progression free survival, but they have a longer period of treatment as well. I think one thing has to be borne in mind is the cost of therapy as well as what is the physical cost of therapy. I believe, even though I'm very excited about these anti-CD20 reagents, I do note that patients have more compromised immunity. They more, may have worsening hypogammaglobulinemia. They also may have neutropenia, and they have increased incidence of infection. So it's not a free lunch. We can't give the antibody and expect it to be just perfect because patients have increased morbidity with therapy, and that's been borne out by this study too for reasons that may be serendipitous, but there's increased secondary malignancies in the rituximab-treated group. There's also increased incidence of neutropenic fever, as well as infection in the patients that were treated with ofatumab versus observation. So I really think we have to look at the facts and try to say, is there improvement in survival? I tend to side with what you're saying. If you're going to treat, treat. And if the patient needs therapy, give therapy. Follow the patient carefully during therapy for the response that you're having, and stop therapy if you feel like you've accomplished the job. I don't believe that any therapy we have, again, is totally safe. And I have patients come to me, they get repeated, we call them rituximab facials, uh, and they get a tune-up, but I'm not sure they're really better off for it. Right. Right. Sure. Yeah. do you have any comments on that? Right, yeah, I think uh, definitely, uh, you know, both studies show that the uh, maintenance therapy with anti-CD20 antibodies seem to prolong progression-free survival, but that's not translate into overall survival benefit. But I think maybe we can, uh, in the future, tease out which are the patients that might actually benefit more from a maintenance therapy. I would imagine that patient who had not a complete response. So people who had a partial response, those are the patients that tends to have a higher risk of progression. So perhaps those patients might benefit more from a maintenance therapy compared to if a patient already had a MRD negative CR, I don't really think those patients would benefit as I, much. I think your point's very well taken. In fact, why don't we achieve an MRD negative CR probably is much more important than just maintaining a, a PR. Because really the issue is that I've given you the antibody with chemo, giving the antibody by itself always bothers me that it's suddenly going to be better than using, say, another agent, a B cell receptor pathway inhibitor or something. I personally have not observed a patient getting a, a, a maintenance rituximab, so, so to speak, after having completed therapy and achieving only a PR with chemoimmunotherapy. I've never seen them go into an MRD negative status. That would be unusual, in my opinion. So I'm not sure if they have a PR. Uh, maybe that's not as good as having a CR, but we have all these other options. And we could then say, let's hold therapy and see if the patient really needs therapy. And another thing that, a point that Dr. Michael Keating makes at MD Anderson is sometimes there can be a maturing of the response. And he claims that he sees actually improvement in the response in the marrow after six months. Mm -hmm. So allow for the response to really play itself out and then be attentive and follow the patient for whether they need additional therapy. I think 
Right. I agree with you. So I say the, the panel would have to agree that I think that one has to be cautious because of these two abstracts. I, I, I would be cautious that the practicing uh, hematologists, oncologists do not give rituxan or ovitumab maintenance to their patients after upfront because I'm in concern that, you know, when these type of information comes out, some people jump on that bandwagon, but I don't think there's enough data long-term follow-up. There's there. no data really in any of the diseases right. that you, you, you may, you may extend the time of progression-free, yes. but you give more rituximab, yes. say, you know, say over time period. I, I would say the one place yes. in my practice that I consider maintenance rituximab mm -hmm. is for the patient that has horrible ITP or autoimmune hemolytic anemia where the problem recurs every six months and you know and it's difficult to treat you have to give steroids and in my pra in my practice